Okay, so you have a jar and you're trying and you're trying to open it, but you just can't, your muscles won't cooperate, but you really just want some carrot bisque, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, I've got the solution for you. This hack is super easy. All you're gonna need is about 10 to 12 inches of some duct tape. You're going to take about two to three inches of that duct tape, tape it to the outside rim of your lid, and then flop it over onto the top of the lid. And then you're gonna kinda take another inch or two and wrap that around the lid and tuck that over. And then the rest of it, you're kinda just kinda fold in half and turn it into like a little rope, if you will. And then you're gonna grab the jar and yank real hard. <laughs> I might need to work on my execution for mine. It does work. It opened great. I made a little bit of a mess, but I think that I could get really good on it. So the next time you get a little hankering for a little carrot bisque and you can't get that lid off, I hope you think of this hack. This episode is sponsored by my friends at Brooklinen. So before we get too far into today's episode, which will be featuring all kinds of hopefully life-changing home hacks for you, I wanted to start playing a little game with you. <laughs> Many of you have heard in my big announcement two episodes ago that I am launching an all-female power tool line. I am so excited about that. And there's been a lot of speculation about the color, the name, the all of that. So going forward in each and every one of the episodes leading up to the launch of that product, which will hopefully happen in the next month or two, I am going to be dropping little Easter egg clues about this new product line in each episode. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. It could be something that I'm wearing. It could be something strategically placed in the background. It could be anything. And it will be giving hints to maybe the color of the power tool line or the name or just little details. And then the night that we actually launch the power tool line, we'll be doing a live stream. We will go back and cover all of those little Easter eggs and it will be a lot of fun. So I am super, super excited about that. I am so thrilled. It's been a lot of effort and you're all worth it. And so I'm super excited about that. Okay, with all that being said, let's get on to our next hack, which is taking a Dollar Tree frame, or it doesn't have to be from Dollar Tree, you could get it from the thrift store, just any old frame and framing out your outlets. So for example, in my craft room, I had this outlet cover and there is a little imperfection above the light switch from maybe some sheetrock that wasn't done exactly right. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't need to be imperfect. This will just elevate the look anyways. So I took this five by seven frame, white. It was already white. I got it from the Dollar Tree, removed the glass, all the backing, and those little black tabs, we yanked those out. And then I took four pieces of this foam mounting tape and put it on the corners of this frame and just pushed it over on the edges of the outlet. And it totally dressed up the look. Now you don't have to just mount it with putty or these mounting squares. You could make it a little bit more permanent, but I think it's a good idea to kind of keep it a little more more temporary just in case you need to take out the off the outlet cover for whatever reason and the, the mounting tape holds up really really well you could also do it with a metallic too like I did here in my kitchen I have this little gold metallic accent in my tile backsplash and I found a four by six inch frame at Dollar Tree that I just slid out all of the stuff there was no tabs and I took some more of that mounting tape and mounted it on there and and it just really elevated the look, dressed it up. It's just a subtle little de well, it's not so subtle. <laughs> In that case, it's not so subtle. In my craft room, it's a little bit more subtle, but it just elevates the look of your home with a simple frame. So that three wide one was a five by seven. My little outlets is a four by six. So you might have to play around with the frame sizes, but it really is cute. And I hope that you enjoy that hack. So in today's episode, I've got some viewer submitted hacks for you. And the first one comes from Lori Christofferson and it is right here in the bedroom. So we're gonna rewind a little bit. I'm gonna sh share with you what she had to say and we're gonna 
do this. <laughs> okay, so for my next couple of hacks, they deal with sheets and bedding. And the first one is putting your sheets on damp. I know it kind of sounds scary. You don't want to put them on sopping wet, but you want to put them on a little bit damp and it will leave you with the most clean, crisp sheets. Okay, so we're gonna make my bed here. And while I put on my sheets, it gives me the perfect opportunity to tell you about this episode's sponsor, Brook Linen. They make the most amazing sheets and bedding. It's awesome. So I'm gonna start putting these sheets on because they are a little bit damp and I don't want them to dry out. We spend a third of our life in bed. That's a lot of time. <laughs> and for me, I have always been a huge proponent in investing in good quality sheets. I am such a princess and the pea, and for me, any kind of wrinkle or crumb or anything in my bed, it's gonna wake me up. And so having super soft, amazing sheets is so important to me. And I love Brooklinen because they are immediately super soft to begin with. But with each wash, they get softer and softer and they're amazing. I mean, they were amazing to begin with. So Brooklinen has over 100,000 five-star reviews, more than any other sheet company out there. They are so amazing. Okay, with this hack, just for the record, you don't want to put them on sopping wet. You don't want like your mattress to get all weird and mildewy. But we're going to make the bed and then we're going to let it sit under the fan and dry off a little bit. But you want them just damp enough. And and then it makes them go on a little bit better and then just smooth it out, smooth it out. But anyways, I have just loved sleeping on these sheets. They are so silky. I think I have the Sateen Luxe set right now and it's just been so nice, so wonderful. The Lux Hardcore Bundle includes a flat sheet, fitted sheet, duvet cover, and four pillowcases, and you save 25% by bundling versus buying the individual items. Their Lux sheets have a sateen finish, meaning the sheets have a buttery, silky feel, they're so amazing, and slight luminous finish, perfect for year-round sleeping. I chose the cream color for the sheets and a warm gray color for the duvet, but you can mix and match from several colors and patterns when you build your bundle. And many of you who've watched my channel for a while know that I've had some health issues. And so I'm having to just make sure that my sleep and all of that is really, really good. And it's really helped me to heal and feel so much better. So thank you to Brooklinen for helping me with that. But they're awesome. I couldn't recommend them enough. Let's finish making up the just the sheet portion for now. And then I've got a cool offer that they've given to all of you. So <laughs> let's just finish this up. Okay, then once you have your sheets on your bed, I'm gonna let them sit under the fan for like 10 to 20 minutes for them to fully dry. They're gonna have no wrinkles, which means a better night's sleep for you, which is so, so important. And Brooklinen wants you to try them out and they've offered you a special discount of $20 off, $100 purchase or more. You just need to use the coupon code Natalie at checkout. Make sure you spell that right. It's Natalie with two E's. I just know that you're gonna love it. Good quality sheets at a, an affordable, fair price. It's a must. <laughs> Look at this, absolutely perfection awesome no wrinkles up next I'm gonna show you how to fold your extra set of sheets it's always a, such a task right I know you might have seen this around but I had to see it multiple times before it finally clicked with me on how to fold this sheets and maybe I've got something up my sleeve that will help you even keep them more contained. So we'll let this dry, then I'm gonna show you how to fold the extra sheets and then I'm gonna put on the duvet cover from Brooklinen that's also amazing and then I'll show you the, the full finish look. So this will be good. 
we're gonna move on to our next hack and that is how to fold fitted sheets. Now, you may already know how to do this. For me, it took my brain a little while to figure this one out. So I'd be like, okay, how does it go again? Then do, do this, do this, and then I'd end up with something like a little like this. <laughs> so if you can relate to that, this one's for you. I'm gonna walk you through it and hopefully for those of you who've already got this down pat, maybe I can throw in a little surprise twist in there somewhere to make things a little bit more exciting for you. So here's how it goes. So you're gonna take any two corners on the same side. So that could be the long side or the short side, it doesn't matter. You're gonna turn it inside out. So we're talking like this is seams. So on the same side, I don't know if you're gonna see this. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna very carefully match it up on the other corner. This is where I always get messed up. <laughs> okay. And then you're gonna take the unfinished side and put it inside the finished side, if that makes sense. Okay, so you have a nice finished side, okay? And then we're gonna do that on the other side. And this is where, after I, I could always get to this point, usually. So here is where a lot of people can do it standing up. I'm gonna take it to a flat surface, so you can take it to a bed, a table, whatever you have, since our bed is available right now. I'm gonna lay this on our bed and we're gonna do it here. So for me, I need to do this on a flat surface, not trying to stand up. So you're just gonna smooth everything else out and just try to square off these corners to the best of your ability, right? And so we're gonna pull in these, try to match that up and make it square to the best of your ability and smooth it out, okay? Doesn't have to be super rocket science at this point, but if we can, okay, so now we've got a corner here, a corner there. We've got these pulled in. And then what I like to do is pull it corner to corner and see this, these are dried and they're wrinkled. So that's why that last hack is so good. <laughs> All right, and then fold it corner to corner and then just smooth it out, smooth it out and then in on itself again and on itself again. Okay, and you can just keep doing this down, but I have another idea because the top sheet's not the hard part. You know, just fold that like you would a normal blanket here. It's just keeping that nice and square. Okay. And what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to match this up a little bit. So I actually might try to, I think I folded it the wrong way here, okay? And then I just stack it up like this. And then of course the pillowcases. So right now I have a stack of my fitted sheet, my flat sheet, and three of the pillowcases. What I like to do is rather than put them in like this or um, wrap them with a band or anything like that, what I like to do is slide this pillow set or slide the sheets inside one of my pillowcases and this will keep it all contained. So there you have it inside here and you do have some excess, but before I close this up, here's another quick little hack for you, is you can take a dryer sheet. This one's like a non-toxic one that smells like peppermint. And we're gonna slide that inside here. This one will just kind of keep it filling fresh a little bit. And we'll just put that inside here. So it feels like it was just done. And then you can, with the right size, you can actually tuck it in on itself, but since this is kind of a king size one, I just kind of fold it like that and then I put it into my cupboard like that. So that's nice and tidy, but they're still wrinkled. So if you want a quick hack on how to de-wrinkle 
already dried sheets. I will link a video at the end of this episode because you don't want to miss any of the rest of these hacks I have for you, but it has a hack of how to de-wrinkle already dry sheets. So you'll want to see that one and I'll link it at the end, I promise, and also down in the description box. So let's finish making this bed and we're going to go grab the duvet cover from Brick Linen out of the dryer, still a little damp, same thing, and we'll go ahead and make the bed. Okay, putting on a duvet cover is hard on any size bed, but king size, I feel like it's just so big and, and it just made it tricky. And this is easy, it's not so hard. It's the same principle, we, we've, we're still following Lori's hack here, putting it on damp. Okay, so for my duvet cover, the first thing I do is lay down my insert on the bed and then I flip my duvet inside out. So you've got access to the little twist ties and I'm just gonna tie those on the corners up here very easily. So we'll keep our insert in place. The same thing to this corner. And then I take our opening Put my, shove my hand all the way in to find that corner. And then I grab it with my hand and I flip it. And it reverses, if that makes sense. And then we're gonna go do that on the other corner. Same thing, reach in all the way till we find that top corner again. And grab it and flip it real quick. <laughs> and then all you have to do is pull it down. A little finessing, but not too much. And then again, you're gonna wanna tie the corners on the bottom. On either side. Okay, we're tying the corners here. Tuck those corners back in and then just button up the bottom. And then I just firmly grab it on the bottom and do a good quick shake to kind of even it out. And then finish making the bed. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm a little bit princess on the pee when it comes to my bedding. And if you asked my husband what my favorite night of the week was, he would answer fresh sheet night. So that's tonight. Anyways, this looks so crisp, clean, scrumptious. I want to dive into it, but I will save that moment for when I can truly relax. My next hack is actually stays here in the bedroom. We're gonna move on over here. So I actually got this idea from Mallory Nicholas. I don't know if you follow her over on Instagram, but she has a beautiful home and I like her ideas. And she was having the same pain point as me. And that is hanging, this hanging cord. I need a charger. I use my phone as my alarm clock. It goes on my nightstand right here. This cord I have to put here because if I drop it down, it gets down into the crevice here. And so I've been just hanging it over my little head po post here and it's driving me crazy because it looks messy and not clean and it just doesn't look right. So what she did is she took some removable hooks and so I just got these ones at the Dollar Tree. These are like wood ones. I'll show you what we're gonna do real quick. We'll pull one out. So what she did with hers is she just tucked it on the back side of her headboard and hooked it on there. Because I have this opening space here, that's not gonna quite work. So you can just take the same idea and kind of follow the principles of it. What I think I'm gonna do is put mine on the very back of my nightstand, just right here on the top corner. And then 
all you do is you hook your cord around it, wrap it around once so it doesn't like pull in one direction and then you can easily access your cell phone cord. And it's not ruining the chi of my room with a messy cord and I did this on my husband's nightstand too. You could do it on the side. Just some place that's not like obvious and, and easily accessible for you. And so it just helps make it look a little bit more tidy. So I really appreciate Mallory sharing that hack with me because I loved it and I wanted to share it with you. So kind of on that same note, my sons will charge their tablets and then they'll put them on like a dining chair because there's a plug-in outlet close to it. So all of their electronics are piled up in random places around the house. I was kind of getting tired of it. So the idea that I had was let's get it off the chair because then you can't use the chair because their electronics are sitting on it but let's get it convenient to the outlet that they're trying to access so again it's just taking command hooks to the size of the device or something that would work two of them and just sticking them to the wall these are removable down the road but they're pretty sturdy and can hold the weight of a tablet and sticking them on the wall and then they can charge your tablet just stick it on the little command hooks it's out of the way it's not going to be easily knocked over but it leaves access to chairs and other things and so I just like that idea you could do that in your bedroom with a cell phone just put them a little bit closer together just so many different places wherever you are charging your devices you could just use a couple of command hooks and get it off of the flat surface so you're not monopolizing that real estate but still getting the job of charging done For my next few hacks, they are kind of bathroom hacks, if you will. And the first one is kind of a serious issue and you don't want to mess around on this one, but I think it intimidates a lot of people and it doesn't need to. So the problem is, is you might be missing little chunks of grout and maybe those little chunks turn into a little bit larger chunks over time. If this is in the shower, this can cause big, problems. That's a, a point of entry for water to get in your walls, cause mold issues. It's a nightmare. There is a very simple way to fix that and that's what I want to share with you now. So what you're going to do is you're going to take some painter's tape and you don't have to do this part. It just makes the the process go so much faster and the cleanup so much easier. So you're going to take some painter's tape and tight tape on either side of the grout line of where you're missing the grout and then you're gonna go to the store and find some sanded grout in like a caulking tube <laughs> if you know you know <laughs> anyways you're gonna just squeeze that caulking into the crack and and then i would wear gloves and just push it into place and smooth it out and that's it. Then you can just throw away the glove, peel back the, the tape, and bam, you have repaired that with some grout. Make sure that it matches up to the existing grout as best you can. Honestly, you shouldn't really notice. And the idea here is like, you're saving yourself from like maybe having to call a handyman. This is something that you can totally take care of yourself. Make your home safe so there's no mold issues. Make sure that you avoid a bigger nightmare. So anywhere you have like little chunks of grout missing, you now know how to fix them and you should because it will save you a lot of money down the road and a lot of headache as well. So I hope that helps you. Okay, so the next one is sometimes after a while of using your shower curtain, it can kind of start to like stick and not glide as easily on your shower curtain rod. So the next one is all you need to do is take some wax paper and just kind of like rub it on, paying particular attention to on top, but you can rub the whole thing with some wax paper. It gets some of that wax onto the rod and it does, it helps it slide back and forth a little bit easier and just make your life have one less thing you have to like have frustration from just open the shower curtain close it easily so I hope that helps you 
this next one, I'm gonna have to just caveat up front. The jury is still out on this, but if you have tried this out, let me know in the comment section below if it worked for you um, and, and your experience with it. But the theory is, all you need to do is take one denture tab a week and put that in the tank of your toilet and if you do this once a week, then you're not supposed to need to clean your toilet as much or it's gonna make it so much easier. I don't know, the jury's still out on it. It's been a few days, the toilet's still looking pretty good, but you'll have to check back with me. And if you have tried this hack out, let us all know in the comment section if it's worked for you. Anything that would get me to clean less toilets, I'm all for that, right? So if you have another hack that will help me not clean as many toilets, hit me up in the comment section below. I'm always trying to avoid that. I put the backpack on her and she doesn't know what to do with it. Where'd you go there? Say hi, Tali. I don't know if you've seen my dining room makeover. I love my dining room and I have these gorgeous restoration hardware captain's chairs that I got on a screaming deal off of Facebook Marketplace. The other day I walked by and I noticed that there was a blood spot on it and my heart stopped and I'm like, ah, those chairs are so expensive and I don't want them to be ruined. Please don't be ruined. They're linen. They're linen, you guys. I knew because I've used this in the past that you can take hydrogen peroxide and use that to get out blood. Now, the fresher the blood, the better this works. So if the blood's been sitting for a while, you may have to work at this a little bit harder. But all I did was squeeze on some hydrogen peroxide and it immediately went to work. Then you use like a white paper towel and a Q-tip to really kind of work it out. And it worked almost instantaneously, even on the linen. I was so relieved. <laughs> Those chairs have really been through some stuff. Right after I got them, Dolly grabbed a steak off the table, flopped the greasy steak right on the chair, and I was able to get that out too, so I was relieved about that. So if you have some blood, try hydrogen peroxide. You might have to work at it a little bit harder depending on the amount and how long it's been sitting, but I have found that to work very well on blood-stained fabric. So I hope that helps save some of your fabric items. I don't know about you, but I have bought a lot of ice packs. They're kind of expensive and it seems like they always go missing like one by one, one will go missing. Anyways, if that's the case for you or you're in need of some sort of ice pack, I've got a simple and easy hack for you. So the first thing you're gonna do is start with a snack sized Ziploc bag. Then you're just gonna take some duct tape of your choice. And this is kind of an opportunity to have a little fun. So if you have something with a fun print, you can use this, but you don't necessarily have to use it. That just makes it pretty. <laughs> and I started by sealing off all of the edges with duct tape. So the bottom and the sides. And then I went on the outside with the duct tape and covered that area as well. You could do one layer, you could do two layers. The idea of the duct tape not only helps with when you're creating this ice pack, when the water kind of melts off, but also it creates insulation. So once you've got that covered, then all you need is a simple sponge for your kitchen. Now, the ones that I had had the Brillo pad on. You don't need that. <laughs> this is actually really cool. So you get it wet, you put it in the Ziploc, bag and then you put it in the freezer until it's frozen solid. Now the cool thing is is even as it melts because it's a sponge well hopefully it will keep some of that water from leaking out but also because you've reinforced it with the duct tape that should also help with that as well. So it's inexpensive, it's affordable, and so easy to do. So you could use this to pack in lunches, you could use this if you've got some sore muscles or you've injured yourself. You know, you always need a good ice pack and so, yeah, just keep it cool. <laughs> just kidding. Cheesy joke, bad joke. <laughs> Next hack. <laughs> Dolly knows where it's at. She knows mama's got the good bedding, huh? My sweet, you're all tuckered out from battling Yoda, baby Yoda. We all have these, and what is that? A sock without a mate, right? <laughs> 
they just go missing. I'm convinced that the washing machines do eat them, but what can we do with these? So I've got a hack for you, and what it involves is you can either take tennis balls or golf balls, and you put them inside the long sock. You can take an elastic and section it out so it makes it a little bit handier, and then you have something like this, and then you can just put it on your neck and give yourself a nice neck massage. Oh, just make sure, ladies, that you don't use your husband's proby ones or they will not be very happy with you. Oh, but this feels so good. So, hey, hang on while I work out this little kink in my neck. Oh, yeah. Mm, you're gonna like this hack. I know many of you have these little bread tags kicking around. If you do, it, like in my bread basket, I was able to find a few of them super easy. If you do, viewer Karen Estelle says, don't toss them out quite yet. So hang on to them, throw them in a Ziploc bag. She says you can use these as like little throwaway scrapers. So if you get something that's stuck on your countertop, like a piece of jelly that's dried on or ice cream that's dried on, or maybe you've got something that's sticking to a mirror that you would normally take your fingernail and scratch it off with. Pull out one of these ones instead so you don't have to like ruin your manicure or anything. Scrape it off and then just toss it in the trash. It's just like a quick and easy hack that she shared with me that I was like, that's actually a pretty good idea. And they were free. I love a hack that's free. So I hope that that helps others like you. Okay, this next hack comes from this very sweet Mrs. Alma Trumbull. She is one of the top commenters on my channel and she always has really good hacks. This one is no different. Um, so what she suggests is if you have these wax melts, sometimes after a while of having them sit in the wax melters, the scent starts to fade for that purpose. And what she recommends is that you take the wax and you pour it back into the container that it came into, and then you tuck it in with your linens, maybe your clothes, and it the scent of them will keep your clothes fresh. So I tucked this into my husband's sock drawer and it does no stinky scent. Well, I mean, hopefully they're not stinky because you like wash them, they're clean and everything, but they're gonna smell extra good when you put them on and put them into shoes put them in your with your towels tuck them in there and this one is a rosemary mint smell and it does it really works so if you have some used wax don't necessarily toss it hang on to it and stick it in and get a second life it's like the last one it's like reuse repeat and find a different use it's like that saying that goes use it up wear it out make it do or do without, <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> so anyways, thank you, Mrs. Alma Trumbull. Love that hack and I hope you did too. All right, I just wanna thank Brooklinen once again for sponsoring this episode. I'm telling you, their sheets, their bedding is so nice, especially when you couple it with the hacks that we have shared with you in this episode. It really makes sleeping a joy and sleep is so, it's a precious commodity. So make sure you pop on over to their website. They've got lots of color selections. Make sure you use the coupon code Natalie with two E's at checkout and you can save an additional $20 off a purchase of $100 or more. And I hope you get the best sleep of your life <laughs> like me. If you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And to all of my DIY goddesses out there, you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.